We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share together this day in your word. We pray that as we listen to it, that your Holy Spirit might take a hold of us and use this word to transform us and the way we live in this world so that we might bring glory and honor to your name and to this wonder of resurrection. We ask it through Christ our Lord. As I mentioned earlier this morning, I uh, give this sermon with uh, apologies to my family. That ought to give you an idea how bad it's going to be. <laughs> Last night, I watched TV for a while with Sue and Katie uh, while we were waiting for Brian and Rachel to get here from Albany. And during it, I got all teary-eyed over the story. So, of course, I got ribbed pretty good <laughs> since I am the same one who regularly tears up over extreme home makeover when they do their reveal. As much as I try not to be too much of an emotional guy, the reality is when the right story comes along, I'm sure to get the weeps. I cry at weddings, usually for the groom. I cry at funerals. <laughs> I don't cry outwardly, of course. That would be unmanly, as if it was really possible to lose your gender by being compassionate. No, I just start to get a little moist around the eyes, and eventually with my cheeks wet, I have to wipe my eyes, and that's when I get caught, and it starts. <laughs> Last night, we were watching NCIS, and the story was about a Marine doing security sweeps of buildings in Afghanistan, who was shot, at least supposedly, by a sniper. He had with him a bomb-sniffing canine. And when the Marine was sent home for his funeral, the dog went too, and was staying with the dead Marine's widow. The show had all the normal twists and turns, so that eventually the main character, Agent Gibbs, played by Mark Harmon, and the dog, played by a lovely black lab, have to go back to Afghanistan to figure it all out. Turns out... The bad guy is actually a corrupt civilian contractor who has been digging up the family treasures the displaced Afghanis have left buried under their houses, a typical Middle Eastern practice that goes all the way back to biblical times. The contractor, outed by Gibbs, of course, pulls a gun on Gibbs, and the Labrador, doing his military duty, intervenes and gets shot. The next scene is back in Washington, where the grieving widow is at the graveside receiving military honors, those due a service member who has died, <laughs> holding a folded American flag. As all the folks at the service begin to move away, up comes Gibbs to sit beside him. She thanks him for finding her husband's killer, and then asks whether the dog is working well with his new handle. It is then, of course, that Gibbs hands her the box with the medal in it that the Black Labrador had earned in service to his country. Already there's mist in my eyes, and the tears are beginning to form. She asks, is the dog all right? And you just know he's not. And the tears start to fall, and they have you hook, line, and sinker. And then Gibbs says, see for yourself as the lab comes walking up, all bandaged and looking injured. And Gibbs says, he's retired now, and he's all yours, and he's a ring. Let's face it, only a leatherneck wouldn't tear up at that incredible story. I thought he was dead. They wanted me to think he was dead. The widow was supposed to think he was dead. It made sense that shock, the Labrador didn't make it. But instead, he is alive and well and living in Washington, poor pet. <laughs> and if I can cry over a dumb show about a dumb story about a dumb dog, doesn't it make sense to think that Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women and Peter and the ten other apostles might have been a bit emotionally undone by the very idea that Jesus was somehow undead. And by that I don't mean that he was a zombie. Although it seems to be the current definition of undead. Undead means not dead. 
Not some creepy animated skeleton with some parts still working, but never the ones that make for smooth walking. <laughs> no, what the disciples heard was that Jesus was not dead, as in alive. The angel, and notice no wings involved, made that much clear. He has been raised to life. They, or at least some of them, had seen him die. Others had taken him to the grave and closed him in it. They weren't even a little bit mystified about what had happened to Jesus. They had seen death time and time and time again. He was murdered, executed by crucifixion. He wasn't just a little dead. He couldn't be then just a little was all dead, and that meant no backsies. They had already cried at his death. It must have been overwhelming. Now they found themselves crying because he was alive. It couldn't be. It shouldn't be. And yet it was. Lest they continue to doubt Jesus is alive, he comes later in the story to make his aliveness absolutely clear to them. And all because, and this is the key, the story isn't over. You see, Jesus didn't come to die so that when he died, God could finish the work of salvation. No. Because although Jesus' death did solve the problem of a perfect lamb slain, there was still a world of folks who needed the gift of salvation explained to them and shared with them and given to them so that like that grieving widow, they could see life beyond death into the incredible reality of eternal life. Jesus died and is risen. While Jesus' work is done, ours is not. An empty tomb is good news because Jesus has conquered death, but an empty tomb is also the good news that sends us into the world. This gospel is a story we are to share with anyone who has encountered death themselves so that they understand that through death, so that though death reigns for a time, the promise is that all those who have died in Jesus will see life again. And for that, I think tears are worthy. My tears and your tears, all of them tears of incredible joy. For you see, he is risen. He is risen indeed. And because he lived, we shall live also. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this incredible good news that is so emotional. He is not dead but is risen and ruling this world. Because he lives, we shall live also. And so faithfully, O oh God, we go into this world to share the good news. That death is not king. That you have defeated it. And that there is hope beyond it. Be with us as we go about serving you. We ask this all in the precious name of him who is risen, even Jesus Christ the Lord. Let's join together in another hymn, and uh, I'm going to get down.